Good morning, Mobile County. I'm Mrs. May. I'm here to depart some education on you about the properties of waves. We're covering eighth grade physical science, so I hope you're in the right place. This is Alabama Course of Study number 17. We're going to be talking about the relationship uh, between wave properties and the energy that waves carry. So I would get out a piece of paper if I were you. There's some great notes that you're going to take and the concept map that I'm going to help you put your uh, terms into the big picture. All right, so what do you need to know about waves? An energy wave is a disturbance that transfers energy from one place to another without transferring the matter itself. So a quick recall. Remember, matter is made up of atoms. Atoms are molecules. All matter is made up of these particles. Energy can pass through this matter without actually displacing the matter. The matter actually goes back into its resting place when the energy passes through it. All right, I'm going to show you some examples, so, so don't get lost just yet. We call the matter that the energy travels through a medium, and the mediums are going to sound familiar to you. They are our states of matter. We have solids, liquids, and gases. So just a quick recap. A wave is a disturbance of energy that can pass through matter without transferring that matter. The matter will return to its resting place and energy is transferred through mediums like solids, liquids, and gases. Not always. I'll give you a disclaimer here in a second. The best way for me to show you this is to actually show you a quick video clip of one of my favorite examples of waves. And that is coming from Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, when they debuted their LED light show. And they asked the audience to hold up their camera, hold up their cell phones, turn on the lights, and on the count of five, they started the wave. Now, you've probably seen this in a regular stadium. You might have even been a part of one, right? but this one utilized lights, and I think that's what makes it really cool. So this video clip came from YouTube, a YouTuber uh, called Spectator Behavior, and I wanna play this short video for you real quick and hope you get to appreciate it as much as I did. So I want you to think of each of those spectators as a particle of matter. So if you imagine you're in your seat and the energy passes through you, but you don't actually leave your seat. You actually will go up with the energy and back down to your seat. So the energy passes through you just like it passes through a medium without actually transferring that matter. There are two main types of waves. There are waves that require a medium in order to transfer, and we call those mechanical waves. And when the way I remember mechanical waves require a medium, I think of a mechanic who needs tools in order to do their job. So if I need a tool like a medium in order to do my job, I'm a mechanical wave. They need that solid, liquid, and gas in order to pass through. But there are also other types of waves that don't require a medium in order to pass through. Those are called electromagnetic waves. And those waves are made up of two parts, an electric part and a magnetic part, actually the magnetic fields. So we will look into that next week. I'm gonna give you uh, some demonstrations in just a second to show this uh, to you, but just hang with me for a second. Mechanical waves can also be broken down into two types of waves themselves. So still talking about waves that need a medium in order to pass through. 
The first one is a transverse wave. And the unique thing about a transverse wave is that when the energy passes through, remember it's just displacing that particle of matter and then the matter will go back into its resting place. The energy moves in an up and down motion. I'm gonna show you that in just a second with a rope. We also have a mechanical wave, again, requires matter in order to move through or propagate through is called a compressional wave. And every time I say the word compression, I think of compressing, compressional wave. And that is indicative of actually how that wave propagates through matter. That energy moves through the particles of matter in a side-to-side -side motion. So I'm gonna pull up this blank screen for you so that hopefully you can see my rope. I'm gonna take my black rope, and I want you to think about this rope as it's not moving right now, is in its resting place. So it has no energy going through it. I'm gonna create a wave of energy, again, by causing a disturbance. So I'm gonna lift my hand up and down, and we're gonna see the wave go through the rope. When you watch it, I want you to think about what kind of wave this is, a transverse wave or a compressional wave. Remember how they, the energy moves through, up or down, or side to side. Ready? So my hand is causing a disturbance. That energy is transferring through the rope to the other side. And it is in an up and down motion. So that is definitely a transverse wave. If I take my good old slinky here, any good science teacher has one, I can demonstrate a compressional wave. Now this one you have to have a little trained eye to see, but I'm gonna stretch out my slinky, and the slinky is representing our particles of matter, and again, right now it's at its resting point. I'm going to cause a disturbance with my right hand, I'm gonna cause a disturbance, and you're gonna see the energy move through the slinky from side to side. You even see a little reflection there, we'll talk about that next week. All right, so you can see that we have two different ways that the energy transfers through matter, either in an up and down motion or a side to side motion. So I wanna label some parts of the wave before I show you this great interactive that Gizmo makes, Explore Learning puts out. I wanna show some parts of the wave and if you will continue with your notes, I want you to draw an up and down line and just label these with me. I'm gonna to go to my smart board here. All right, the most important thing known about a wave is that the matter in the first place has a resting point. So before I move the rope, we had a resting point. And that's what I'm gonna draw with my dotted line there. And there's some basic parts of a transverse wave that we need to be familiar with before we move on. The first one I can think about is the one at the top of the wave, and we call that the wave crest. And that should sound familiar to you, especially if you go to the beach, you see the waves crashing onto the beach, you see them crest, the crest over. But there's also the part of the wave that is called a trough. I remember trough when I'm labeling a transverse wave because I think of this U shape right here, uh, and it reminds me of what a farmer would feed their animals out of, it would be a trough. So that's at the bottom. Some other parts of the transverse wave that we need to be familiar with is wave length. And we measure wave length looking at crest to crest. And we can also look at wave length from trough to trough. So that's one way to measure the property of waves. And then on the transverse wave, the last thing we have to measure is this right here, and that's why I needed that resting point it was so important. This is my amplitude, and we're gonna talk more about amplitude when we get to sound. But those are the parts of your regular, or your transverse wave that needs a medium in order to pass through. And the amplitude in particular is the displacement of the matter from its resting point up to the crest, or from the resting point down to the trough. But really the best way to see this is in action. So I've got an interactive uh, video for you, or an interactive um, site at explorelearning.com. 
Uh, my students and I use these often, and they're really helpful. And I can manipulate different parts of this interactive uh, to show different things that I would like to uh, see with a transverse wave. So I'm going to make sure my settings are correct. I've got a transverse wave. I have an, my amplitude set at 20 centimeters. This is going to be important in a minute. And I have the frequency set at 0.75 hertz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the lights off on the background of our gizmo because what I want you to see is this tracer. And if you're looking at your screen, the tracer is a green dot. It's kind of in the center of the transverse wave. So I'm going to hit play, and what I want you to watch is the displacement or the tracer's motion when I hit play. So as the disturbance transfers through the matter, the particle of matter is displaced, but it will return back to its resting point when that energy passes. All right. So that's what we have for our transverse waves. I want to get back to the other type of mechanical wave that we have, which is called a compressional wave. And our compressional wave is a energy movement back and forth through matter. So instead of going up and down, it compresses through matter. And this is a, a quick little uh, diagram. A lot of people draw their compressional waves as uh, a circular motion like this or even this type of diagram. But the one I have here is a little bit more accurate. This type of wave also has its own parts. It has where you see that the dots are very close together. Those are conveniently called our compression. So where the dots are close together, that's where the matter is being compressed. And then we have this other section in between right here. You can tell the little particles of matter are farther apart. That is called a rare faction. And we're going to talk about that more when we get to sound. So we have a compression and a rarefaction. And so we have these periods of a compressional wave, and we can also talk about the wave length of a compressional wave. We can measure that from compression to compression, or we can measure that from rarefaction to rarefaction, similar to the wavelength in the transverse wave, where we can measure it from crest to crest or trough to trough. So I can also show you this with our interactive, which I think is a great way to show concepts um, that are hard for us to picture. But I need to change my controls to a compressional wave, which is actually going to be labeled a longitudinal wave, which is another word for a compressional wave. So now I have changed my type of wave. So I want you to think, I want you to predict. I want you to predict if the transverse wave motion was up and down, and we watch the tracer go up and down as the matter was displaced, as the energy went through, I want you to picture or predict in your mind what this should look like if a compressional wave was transferring energy before I hit play. You got it in your mind? All right, I'm going to hit play. All right, so there's that back and forth motion. So we have our compressions, rarefactions, compressions, rarefactions as the energy propagates through the compressional wave. And you can see the tracer. The tracer is going in a back and forth motion as compared to up and down. All right, getting back to our notes. I'm going to go to our whiteboard here in just a second. There we go. All right. There's some properties of waves that are fundamental to understanding how to compare them. And I'm going to give you a real world example when we close up. One of the properties of waves that is most important is frequency. And I want you to relate the word frequency to the word frequent. If I were to tell you something were to happen frequently, you would picture in your mind that it happens more often. 
So if we have a frequency or a high frequency, then the wavelength is passing more often. If we have a low frequency, then we have a wavelength that is passing less often. And the way I like to explain this is to think about a doorway. So you're in your house, just picture a doorway. Look at a doorway. And I want you to imagine people passing by that doorway. And our people are going to represent our particles of matter or our energy moving through our particles of matter. So imagine this doorway is a one second gateway. Now if somebody were passing infrequently, then you would have one person pass through that doorway at any given time. Just one person passing. Give it a few seconds. Another person passing through that gateway. Another person passing through that gateway. But if we had a higher frequency, what you would picture were people passing through that doorway one at a time, one right after the other. Okay, can you picture that in your mind? All right, so now let's put that concept with our wave properties. So we have a wave length, and remember, a wavelength is a measurement from a crest to crest, or we can look at it from compression to rarefaction. So if I had a crest to crest measurement, which is my frequency or my wavelength, my, my people would be closer together as they passed. Higher frequency, people are passing by my doorway closer together. That means my wavelength is actually going to be shorter. Now if I had a low frequency or less people passing by my doorway, my gate, then I would have a longer distance between those two people. They would be less frequent. All right, one last property of wave before we go to our uh, concept map over on the whiteboard. Uh, back to amplitude, and if you look at your notes where you drew your transverse wave and you labeled amplitude, the amplitude measures the energy the wave is carrying, the amount of displacement from the resting point. So when we talk about sound in a little while, we're going to talk about amplitude and what that means to pitch and, um, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought, pitch and amplitude. It relates to loudness. Thank you. All right, so going to our concept map. I like to learn with concept maps. One of the things that it helps me do is put the, the terms and the concepts I've learned into a big picture so I can relate to it. So here we've got in the center of our concept map the overall idea of waves. And just to review, we have two types of waves. We have mechanical waves. Recall that means that they need a medium in order to pass through a solid, liquid, or gas. And of those mechanical waves, we have two types. We have our transverse waves that are moving in an up and down motion as the energy propagates through the matter. And we have a compressional wave or a longitudinal wave that has the back and forth motion or side to side motion as the energy passes through. So on the other side, you can see there's a little bit of like an allude. We can allude to what's coming up next. We've got some stuff left over. I'm just going to help you fill this out because I don't like blank spaces. Here we go. We got electromagnetic waves. Remember, those do not require a medium to pass through. And then here we are. We've got our properties of waves. We have our wavelength, crest to crest or trough to trough, or in a compressional wave, rarefaction to rarefaction or compression to compression. We have our amplitude, which in a transverse wave is easy to see. We're looking at the resting point to the height of the crest or from the resting point to the bottom of the trough. And we have our frequency, which is very closely related to wavelength. A higher frequency, shorter wavelength. Lower frequency, lower wavelength, longer wavelength. Wave speed is also in there. All right, so just to close this up, I want to talk to you about a real world example. And I actually used this example yesterday before it got so rainy today. So when I like to go fishing, I pull up my fishing report and I look at you know the, the fish guide to see what the tides are and whatnot. And I often see uh, on the report, and this is from uh, NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration site, that we have a dominant period of four seconds. 
So I've seen this all my life, and then I thought to myself, wait a second, what does that mean? So I'm looking at the dominant period, meaning four seconds, so that's time. So what this really looks like in real life is that when you go to uh, go boating, especially offshore, not as important as inshore, but if you're going offshore, you're looking at the wavelength of the transverse wave. So to bring this, bring this home for you or the, to apply it to the real world, wind will apply that energy to the surface of the water. That energy is transferred. So when the wind transfers that energy to the water molecules, the water will go up and down. And I bet if you pay attention, especially this summer, if you've ever seen somebody in a floaty in a pool and the wave comes by, the person goes down with the trough, up with the crest, but they don't actually move. Same thing, I've, funny enough, what I think of is when I saw trash floating at the bay the other day. It was going up and down and up and down. So the matter again is not moving, it's just going back to its resting point. So dominant period being four seconds. So what that's saying is that between crest and crest, there is a time period of four seconds in between. So what does that mean to you and I if we want to go offshore fishing? Four seconds, that's not so choppy. That's not really bad. If we see something lower than that, that means that that wavelength is shorter. That means the waves are not as far apart time-wise, which means we're going to be in for some choppy water. Now, if you're researching and, and you're going to extend your learning on this, you can also apply the wave speed and the amplitude is something they also report to see if that's something that really will change your mind if you're going to go offshore fishing or something like that. So that's a real world example for you. I just wanted to close up with that. Um, next week we're going to talk about um, wave, wave uh, sound waves. I'm sorry, there we go, sound waves. In particular, we're going to talk about compressional waves. And when we get into compressional sound waves, we're going to talk about wave behavior. And wave behavior is things like reflection, uh, diffraction, uh, looking at sound and light bending around matter or bending around a barrier, rather. So I hope you join me next Wednesday at 1030. I'm Miss May. This is 8th grade physical science.